right, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeremy Cardi. I am Copernic's live stream astronomer. And uh, the goal of tonight, uh, this preview, uh, is to take a look at this planetary alignment uh, that's been in the news, and uh, people have been talking about it. Uh, we'll, we'll learn a little bit about it during this live stream <clears throat> and uh, when you can see it. So uh, thank you all for tuning in. I hope you're, you're all doing well. Um, I'm sure a lot of our, our viewers now are those that uh, checked out the Lunar Eclipse live stream uh, that we do have a time lapse posted on our channel uh, that you can check out. Uh, in fact, why don't I switch to presentation view here uh, so that you can see our YouTube page where you're viewing now. If I were to refresh it here, you'll see, yep, there's us watching the planets align preview. Uh, <clears throat> by the way, the image, the thumbnail, uh, four of those uh, pictures were taken at Copernic. I'll leave it to you to guess which, and maybe I'll reveal it in the uh, next live stream that we're doing Saturday, uh, what would that be? Saturday morning. <laughs> I gotta keep my, my uh, live streams in, in check here, figure out when, they're, when they actually are. Uh, so uh, this one's gonna be, like I said, a preview and we'll do some Q&A um, towards the end, kind of like what we do for our Copernic Friday Night Live programs. One of those is tomorrow as well. Um, those cover a variety of STEAM topics, so science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And tomorrow's is about ham radio, and it's uh, possibly uh, your next hobby. And it will be presented by our director here at Copernic, uh, Andrew Desker. <clears throat> so look forward to those. We have a whole batch of live streams planned here for in the very short term. And uh, that's in part thanks to your support during the Lunar Eclipse stream, uh, we, we had uh, so many people watching, supporting us uh, by, you know, hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel, supporting us and, and through donations as well. And uh, we had the chance to upgrade a lot of our uh, backend technology that we use to run these live streams because of your, uh, your help with that. So we thank you so much and uh, we'll uh, see how we can continue to improve our live stream programming. <clears throat> for you. So uh, Copernic.org is where you can learn more. Mind you, I'm just going through a little intro for anyone that's new that's watching. If you are uh, a seasoned Copernic uh, viewer, then you know all this. So just bear with me. We'll get into the new content in just a second. But uh, Copernic.org is where you can learn more about upcoming events here at Copernic, some astronomical events in some cases, uh, so our, our summer camp programs, these, a lot of these are all in person, um, but our Friday night programs, we do stream live uh, as, as the program goes on. So there's that ham radio one. <clears throat> like I said, we have, we have uh, summer camps, maybe some spots open for uh, those interested. And then at the bottom of the page, relevant to astronomical viewing, is the clear sky chart and this is where you can find out if the skies will be clear at Copernic. Now if you don't live nearby you may say okay that's not going to do me much good but it is kind of cool that you get to uh, see what our skies are doing and maybe look out for a live stream uh, because they're sort of geared towards seeing dark blue on this uh, uh, forecast model. So this is why we're not doing a planetary alignment stream in the morning, uh, Friday morning, because you can see cloud covers not looking great, transparency and seeing very poor conditions. That's what the white boxes mean. Um, you really want good seeing to capture detail on planets. Um, so right there is already kind of a non-starter. Uh, even if the, the clouds were behaving somewhat. If the seeing is poor, you're going to have a hard time getting detail on those objects. So instead, we're going to use the second opportunity, which is the morning of, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that'd be the morning of uh, June 25th. 
and it looks like our transparency got a little iffy um, there, but more often than not, that's associated with deep sky objects, not planets. So as long as our seeing continues to hold out, and our cloud cover, of course, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where things are there. So uh, <clears throat> we'll talk more in detail about that live stream. It's already posted, so if you want to read through those, you're welcome to. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to get a drink of water here. I have to keep clearing my throat. One thing we, we pride ourselves on to some degree is that we can do these live streams, but that also means they're very informal. <laughs> so let's see. Oh, by the way, I behind me I have, this is a real photo, not a, a virtual backdrop, of the uh, Pillars of Creation, which is a Hubble Space Telescope image um, zoomed in on the Eagle Nebula. Uh, so you can kind of see the beak here but it, it's gotten the name The Pillars of Creation because this is the stuff that stars are made of. <clears throat> okay. So let's keep going here. Uh, again, that's accessible. The link for Copernic, our social media and uh, whatnot, is in the video description as well. And there is a link to the uh, official uh, Five Planetary live, uh, Alignment live stream there too. Okay, so the first tool uh, that we're going to use today to talk about this planetary stream is Stellarium. And Stellarium is an incredible resource that you can access for free at home. So uh, you can get it for Linux, Mac, Windows, and there's even a Stellarium web version. And again, my uh, viewers that have been uh, following us at Copernic Observatory for a while, know about Stellarium, I'm sure, but again, for anyone new, uh, Stellarium Web, you just access right in the web browser, and you can set your location uh, and add constellations and artwork. Uh, it's a little more basic. There's not as many settings, but it... Uh, it, it works well, and especially if you only have uh, web app capabilities on your computer. But uh, again, Stellarium.org is where you want to go. <clears throat> and uh, you can download it at these links at the top. It gives you some more details towards the bottom of the page. It's really compatible. Uh, there's even, for the new app, uh, MacBooks and whatnot uh, that run on different processors, there's two versions there. <clears throat> So very compatible system, and uh, I recommend it. So let me show you what it looks like. We're going to do a quick overview, and then we'll jump into using it. It was actually Stellarium is what we were using in the preview, what we always do uh, use as the preview, um, the waiting room for the live stream. Okay. So I'm going to return this back to the live view because... Since we were using it as a preview, the sky has been cycling as the Earth rotates. And we are on, well, we're on June 25th. How about that? Uh, on the evening of June 25th, though. So let's go back to current time. I hit the play button to re return to real time. We're not time traveling anymore. We're just going second by second. But we still are on June 25th. If we want to return to uh, today's date, we click the hourglass shape and that pops us back to the current uh, time, June 23rd at about 9.30 p.m. And those that, anyone that's viewing internationally um, or uh, even across the states, uh, we are on the East Coast. We're located in Vestal, New York, uh, East Coast of the U.S. So that means that uh, uh, we're, we're in EDT, Eastern Daylight Time. Okay, now there's one more thing I got to do here um, that I had as a, uh, a setting set up for the, that waiting room, uh, and that's turn the atmosphere back on, because you can see at the current time, it's where we're located, there's still going to be some uh, diffuse sunlight from the setting sun. Uh, it's not completely dark here yet. It will be in a little bit, 
about an hour or so, we'll have nice dark skies, but uh, not quite yet. Now, mind you, if you look uh, in our, what we added a weather widget to our live stream. So in the upper right corner of your view, you can see our temperature and it's cloudy. So that's another a, a reason why we can't run the uh, observing stream tonight, but we will on Saturday morning for this event. Uh, okay, so I'm going to bring up the clock here. And the clock is a great widget to have on Stellarium because it shows you very specifically where you are and you can make fine adjustments rather than the, using these fast forward and rewind, which can be useful. You just want to gradually move the sky and see what rises and sets. But this is more useful to pinpoint uh, where these uh, events will happen. <clears throat> so, good. Uh, let's show you, too, the constellations. Down here, you have the lines. Connect the dots in the sky to draw our pictures. You can label them, show you their names, like Cygnus the Swan. And you can even draw out the artwork. So you can learn a little bit about the mythology and what they're truly supposed to look like in your mind's eye, or an interpretation of it, at least. OK. I will leave the constellations up so we can sort of navigate as we explore into the morning sky. <clears throat> now, I will do a preview for both uh, tonight into tomorrow morning and the following day as well, because you have opportunities for both the early morning sky coming up here on Friday and the early morning sky coming up here on Saturday to view this event. Um, I've seen the 24th being mentioned the most, and there is some truth to uh, being probably the most ideal time, but uh, Saturday mo morning is totally practical for viewing the five planet alignment as well. <clears throat> All right. And uh, I see some questions popping up in the chat. Um, I will t uh, definitely get to those um, maybe at our midway point, we'll answer some questions. So if you have them, feel free to list them out uh, in the chat log there. <clears throat> okay. So where was I? Oh, yeah, we want to go to the eastern sky. And I'm just clicking and dragging the screen to uh, move the sky. And that equates to just moving your head, right? Moving your head around, looking at different areas. It's really a full-fledged planetarium for your home. It works so well. So I can't uh, encourage your use of it enough. <clears throat> and it works during cloudy days. That's especially helpful. Okay. So I'm going to actually use the gradual uh, fast forward here. We'll click once, twice, and maybe, <laughs> excuse me, uh, once more. And we're looking to the east because that's where the planets are going to rise. The first one being Saturn. <clears throat> There's Saturn. I'll pause it here. And uh, Jupiter just rose up as well. So Saturn, I have the exact times listed here. Um, Saturn's going to rise up at about 1130 in the uh we can actually go back in time to see that. Nope. Just hitting the horizon around 1130, 1140. And mind you, we're set up for Vestal New York here on Earth. You can bounce around to other planets if you wanted to in Stellarium, but we're going to stay on Earth because uh, it has the best viewpoint of this alignment. That's why we're celebrating, I guess. <laughs> you know, why we're enjoying, we're able to enjoy it. And I have another program to show you how that works. Uh, but you can change your location here, and then you just input your city, and it's across the world. You can see your sky. That was a critical point. I forgot to show you the location window. Okay. So Saturn rising up in the uh, east there. And we're going to keep going. So we'll return back to where we were, which is after 
one o'clock, and you can see Jupiter's rising up, hitting the horizon at around one, one fifteen or so. So there it is. We'll keep going. Zoom in a bit so you can see them a little better on the eastern sky there. All right, and you can see, <clears throat> for the most part, the planets are following the stellar background or the celestial sphere. That's true on a short-term basis. Um, so on a nightly basis, that will be the case, but over the course of a month, a couple months, a year, uh, they make pretty drastic movements through the constellations. Um, and that's why they're called... Uh, Wandering stars. That's actually what planet means, is the wa a wandering star. Okay, so let's pause it here because we just got a bunch more. So we have uh, Jupiter, Saturn. We talked about those. Mars rose up as well. Mars rose up at around 140, 145 in the morning. So following Jupiter. Uh, and then here comes the moon at around 2... 40, again, Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, all right. Now, the moon is a waning crescent. It's actually a pretty thin waning crescent, which you don't get to see too often, because usually that means it's really close uh, to the sun, or approaching, or I guess also departing <laughs> the sun from our perspective night by night. So uh, this will be kind of a cool... Uh, object to look through our telescopes as well. And that's it, in part what also makes this kind of a rare event is the fact that the moon comes into play. Okay, a little bit further on here, we have Venus rising up at around 3.40 in the morning. Now, if we zoom out here, you'll you'll notice the sky is starting to brighten up a bit. And that is, of course, because of the sun. And what's going to make this last planet very difficult to spot. Not in Stellarium, but in the real sky. For those living further north um, in the northern hemisphere, this will become exceedingly more difficult the further up you go. We're at 42 degrees latitude <clears throat> where uh, our observatory is in New York, but uh, we're already struggling. The further north you go as you head into Canada and beyond, Mercury is going to disappear, then Venus. Um, you just keep losing more and more as you head north. Same thing in the, uh, in the southern hemisphere in the very far south. Okay, so now we have in our sky, in Stellarium, the five-planet alignment. But you'll notice, I mean, depending on how you move the sky here, but this is a warped view. It's a warped field of view. Um, they not, aren't necessarily following a straight line, though they appear to. Um... They're following something uh, called the ecliptic. So there is a way to turn the ecliptic on in Stellarium if you go in, oh, wrong one, into sky and viewing options. You can click markings and you'll find ecliptic here. There's that red line, that's the ecliptic. And this is the, uh, the line that the main planets and the moon and the sun follow across the sky. Uh, now you may ask, okay, why is that? Uh, that seems rather odd. Um, why are they in a line compared to the stars that are speckled and scattered about the sky? Uh, this has to do with uh, solar system formation. When solar systems form, uh, you have the sun at the center, and then you have this disk of material surrounding it. Rocks, ice, 
dust. <clears throat> uh, and what happens is that's, what, that's the material the planets are built from. Over time, more and more of it coalesces. Big rocks smashed into small rocks. Big rocks smash into big rocks. And uh, you eventually end up with the, the large planets that we have th uh, throughout the solar system. But they never veered off from that disk. They stay within it as they collect more and more material. Uh, so the early solar system was in chaos, but uh, structured in a disk. And that's why all of the planets and the moon and the sun fall along that. It has to do with the structure of the solar system. Now, there are some exceptions to that, certainly, and that's where you're, especially with Kuiper belt objects, um, where in comets, they have weird uh, uh, orbits that come in, uh, in at weird angles to the disk of our solar system or the ecliptic uh, plane. So uh, that's, that's the, the explanation for, for why we can have these uh, sort of alignments at all. <clears throat> now, there's, like I said, there's another explanation for why we have such a great view of this that I will show uh, in another program. This one, this Stellarium doesn't let you uh, fly out into space. Um, it will let you zoom in on objects, which I'd like to do here, starting with Saturn. If we go, actually, let's go in order. What am I thinking? The planets are in order. Another reason why this uh, alignment is so cool. Uh, it's not just a, a geometrical alignment, even though it's not quite a line. Um, it's also uh, the planets lining up in order. And you could even include the moon in that. So you have the first planet Mercury, then Venus. The moon orbits the Earth, so we'll include it. It's uh, not thir the third planet from the sun, uh, but it is positioned third uh, with the third planet from the sun. <clears throat> and then Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, all in order. So if you... On Stellarium, when you click the space bar, that centers your object. Make sure you have it targeted, though. So I'm targeting Mercury first. And then you can use the scroll wheel to zoom on in. Get right up close to it. And get a sense of what it looks like. <clears throat> okay. Zoom out here. And then we'll go to Venus. Spacebar to center and zoom in. There's Venus. Now you notice Mercury and Venus were kind of in phase. Actually, let me double check that with Mercury. How much in phase? Oh yeah, Mercury definitely was. About a, a, a quarter, no oh, sorry, a half Mercury. I'm thinking first quarter moon. A, uh, a half Mercury and a gibbous, gibbous Venus. And only the inner planets really go through those phases. Mars does a little bit because um, it's close enough to us. Uh, but Mercury and Venus go through full phases for us. <coughs> uh, because we're seeing them from the outside, looking in at them. So we get to see them go through the crescent phases. Uh, it's really, really neat. Then we have the moon. Like I said, the moon is a waning crescent. So we'll get actually, with that crescent, we'll get some good detail through our, our scope. Although this is June 24th, if we skip ahead to 25th, it'll get a little bit smaller. So uh, we'll still pick up some nice craters across the moon. Oh, sorry, wrong thing. Back to 24th. Tomorrow morning sky. Okay, and Mars. Let's see what if there's any. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of phase going on with Mars. Like I said, that's because uh, it's close enough to us. Uh, we can kind of look off to the side sometimes, depending on our perspective. <clears throat> but we never get to see a half Mars or anything like that. It never gets quite that small. You can see the two moons of Mars, Phobos and Deimos. 
And finally, oh, nope, we got two more. <laughs> There's so many. Uh, then we have Jupiter and its four Galilean moons. It looks like we, on the 25th, can we see? Oh, no, not quite. Oh, yeah, but those that can see uh, Jupiter up close tonight should be able to spot the red spot. Because if we back it up an hour or two, if you start early enough, if you start your observing session early enough and you have a telescope, you'll see the red spot on Jupiter. That's uh, for, that'd be 2 a.m. Friday morning. Okay, and there are the, the moons of Jupiter. Nice alignment there of the moons, too. Um, and that's always the case. Uh, that's how the Jupiter moons formed as well. And if we go to the following day, oh, even better. Look at that. Cool. <clears throat> and now Saturn. Okay, zooming in on Saturn now. And Saturn has a bunch of moons too. Titan uh, is the second largest moon in the solar system next to Ganymede uh, around Jupiter, one of the Galilean moons. And uh, you usually can see some of these brighter ones through a scope too. Uh, but of course the biggest feature of Saturn are the rings beautiful rings of Saturn, which uh, even through a small telescope, you can tell that Saturn, even binoculars, really, you can tell that it's a disk shape. But as you use a more and more powerful telescope and push the magnification, those rings and the planet separate, and you just get a beautiful structure. So again, you can use this at home if you like. Uh, Stellarium.org is where you can download it. It's free. And it's a great way to preview the planet, uh, planetary alignment yourself uh, at home. All right. So that's the, uh, on June 24th, uh, we looked at what's going to happen uh, if you stay up late tonight into the morning hours or if you wake up early about an hour before sunrise, this is what you'll see. And uh, that's the, the critical point, though. Uh, you want to make sure that you wake up early enough. Set your alarms for about 4.30 in the morning at the latest. Again, Easter daylight time. Uh, because uh, you don't want the sky to brighten too much. You can see already at 4 o'clock, uh, no, this is 4.44, the sun's already starting to uh, come up caught and cause some twilight. The planets will still be there. Stellarium does a pretty good job of estimating if you'll be able to see them or not. You can see even Mercury down here in the sunlight would be there, but it's very low. You need a clear horizon. It will rise, but of course that means, if you look here, as it rises further and further, it's going to get dimmer and dimmer. Um, so you want a clean, uh, a clear horizon, ideally. Uh, no trees, and um, get, try and get a look at Mercury as soon as you can, as soon as it rises, because your opportunities uh, go downhill from there. Now, that's specifically in our location. Um, depending on where you are, you'll have better luck. Um, if, you, you know, if you go further towards uh, the equator, you should have some uh, better luck. But for us here in the north, uh, uh, in New York, uh, the northern part of the northern hemisphere, we're really pushing it with our view of Mercury. And uh, if you go any further, um, as you head closer and closer to the North Pole, you lose more and more. <clears throat> so uh, Venus, though, uh, you should uh, be able to catch pretty easily. It's really bright. Um, even when it's in phase like that, there's a lot of light. Uh, coming from Venus because it's close, it's much larger than Mercury, it's about the same size as Earth, and uh, yeah, so it, it's, a, it's a bright planet. There's the, the moon is, well, of course, uh, we, we just did our observing live stream uh, about a month ago on the lunar eclipse, we had a lot of fun with that, um, but uh, that'll be easy to spot even in its crescent phase. 
Mars is tough. We're, we're not. We're getting closer and closer to Mars currently, um, and the close approach will be in December. So look forward to that. That'll be a great time to observe it. But uh, it's <clears throat> it's uh, still pretty far away at the moment, and it's a small planet, so it makes it dim. So Mars will actually start to fade with Mercury. Mercury can be pretty bright, too, because uh, it's right on top of the sun. Um, so that helps it, but Mars is further away, and it's, it's pretty small as well. So... Uh, that's going to start to fade, so you want to get a good view of Mars as early as possible. Thankfully, it's higher up in the sky, so you'll be able to see it at, in the, the night sky. Jupiter is bright, uh, and Saturn is, is uh, pretty dim in the twilight here. It is further out, uh, but it's not going to be nearly as bright as Jupiter or Venus. But you should still, even in the twilight, you should be able to catch it, because it's higher in the sky, um, and it's further away from the sun, so it won't be near that sky glow you see over there. But of course, Saturn, on top of it, if you're willing, this is if you wait, decide to set your alarm for, you know, 4, 30, 5 o'clock in the morning, um, and you're just trying to catch it just before sunrise. If you're willing to just watch this all night, you'll be able to see Saturn in the night sky no problem, if your skies are, are clear of clouds. So, uh, that's one way to go about this event. Um, you can uh, stay up uh, or you know, set your alarm for 2 o'clock in the morning and watch this play out um, as each planet rises up. Or you can uh, just set your alarm for 4.30, about an hour before sunrise, and uh, take care of it that way. So there's, there's a couple different possibilities for how you might go about this. And everyone, I think... Uh, uh, will be a little different on how they approach it. Okay. So uh, that's the Stellarium view, and I'll show you what this is the 24th of June. Here's the 25th. So our view, when we run this, uh, our observing event for the planetary alignment, um, will look like this. The 24th, I will say, is very pleasing to the eye because of how uh, the moon is almost in the center of Venus and Jupiter. Um, even if we back it off uh, an hour or two, it would get uh, even further towards Jupiter, so it would be almost equidistant. Uh, that's uh, certainly satisfying, and I wish we could cover that version, but our conditions are going to be cloudy tonight, um, whereas Saturday morning it's looking really good. So uh, that's the problem we're encountering. But... I would say uh, the 25th really doesn't change too much. Uh, if we go back to 4.30, uh, you see Mercury, Venus. The moon is still in order. Um, it's still in between Venus and uh, Mars. So that's not a problem. Uh, and then you have Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So the planets are still in alignment. Uh, they're still in order. Uh, and, you know, even if you push it to the 26th, the moon will be on top of Venus, so you kind of lose that bonus for this, but the planets are still good. And that's kind of a cool conjunction for Venus and the moon. So uh, the point I'm trying to make here is that there's a lot of opportunity to see this. So if your skies are cloudy um, over the next couple days, don't let that stop you. You can still see a lot of the planets if you wake up early. Uh, the one uh, major caveat here over uh, the next couple weeks is that Mercury is going to be the one that drifts off. You can see it's getting closer to the, hori the horizon. Um, so Mercury is tough because it has a very short orbital period. Um, before you know it, it's on the other side of the sun. It doesn't take long. And uh, that's why it's moving so quick um, compared to the other planets that have much longer and uh, consequently slower orbits. Okay. <clears throat> so there's that. We're on July 2nd. We'll go back 
to the 25th, because again, that will be our, our stream. So I think you get the picture with this. Um, I might return to it uh, towards the end to uh, bounce around at different locations and show, and show you how this view changes based on how you change your location across the planet. But what's really great is that almost everyone on, on Earth can see some version of this event and uh, see the planets in the morning sky in a nice line and order. And uh, that's great. It's great that and it's great that we can also see this over the course of a few days, um, because it gives everyone the, uh, a lot of people the opportunity to see it, uh, no matter what their conditions are on a given day. So don't think if if uh, it's June twenty fourth. I've seen that in the news. Everyone's talking about it like it's happening, uh, and it's only happening uh, on on Friday morning. There are other opportunities to see the planets in order. Um, over the next uh, few days, and Saturday morning is also uh, optimal for seeing everything in order from Mercury, Venus, the Moon as well, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. <clears throat> so it's a really cool event. They're nice and spread out in the sky too, which is nice. You have a lot of time to view Saturn and Jupiter and Mars. And uh, that differs from the next time this will happen, which is in 2040, I think it's August 2040. Um, they're going to be much tighter and much closer to the sun and a bigger challenge to view um, all at once uh, as a marathon, you know, running through each one. This one gives you a lot of time to enjoy it. Um, and uh, it's, it's definitely uh, worth it if you're interested in doing an observing marathon like that or just seeing them in the sky. Um, I think when we go down towards the equator, this will look really cool. So stay tuned for that. Um, I'm going to take an opportunity to answer some uh, questions. Uh, just uh, This will be our halfway point. Uh, so if you have questions, you can ask them now. <clears throat> and then we'll do another Q&A session at the end, as because I have another program to show you that will show you an outside perspective of why this event is happening at all um, and, and the way it's happening. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go right back to the beginning, and I always read your question aloud. So some of these I, I did answer uh, already, like what time is the this supposed to happen. Um, if you want to see, just, you know, see it all at once really quick, um, just set your alarm for an hour before sunrise for where you're located, and uh, you'll see them. Is make sure you have a nice clear view to the east, because that's where they're, uh, all of the uh, late rising planets are going to show up. So that would be Mercury, Venus, and even the moon, depending on where you are. So go look to the eastern sky, make sure you have a clear view, and uh, set your alarm an hour before sunrise. Um, for the night owls, though, if you just want to keep pushing uh, through starting even at the uh, you know, 11 o'clock or 11.30 when the Saturn rises up. Um, and then just keep going, watching Jupiter rise, Mars rise. You can spend a lot of time observing each planet as it rises. Uh, okay. And uh, Sharon here says uh, that they're from South Florida. Awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, and what time is this uh, starting? I'm not sure if that was referring to the stream or this event, um, but uh, maybe we could uh, go down to some uh, locations where uh, you guys are living, um, where, where you live, and uh, see what your skies will look like. That's not something uh, we've really had the chance to do before because usually our uh, big event streams, um, which this isn't one, this is just a preview, um, have more have, have just too many viewers to try and accommodate everyone, but I think we can take an advantage, uh, it, or rather take advantage of the situation here and maybe run through some of those um, locations. So I see someone, we have someone from Florida, we have someone from Australia, which is one of the ones I wanted to do. So we'll definitely go visit Australia to see what how this event looks different 
because we're viewing from New York, how does that change uh, perspective when you go into the Southern Hemisphere and on the other side of the planet? Uh, D says that eclipse was amazing. Thank you so much uh, for, uh, assumedly, if you tuned in, and I hope you had a great view of it where you were too. <clears throat> Everly says, that's the stuff stars are made of. Yes, back here. Hydrogen and helium gas and dust. The stuff stars are made of. Stardust. Oh, uh, Lindsay from uh, Australia as well. All right, well, we're definitely going to see what this looks like in Australia. And we have our moderator, Astronomy Web, tuning in. Hello. So uh, the best uh, viewing for New York in uh, for this alignment, if you want, like I said, if you want to see it all at once, is at uh, about an hour before sunrise at four thirty. Oh, someone's from Poland. Oh, and we have our uh, Copernic chat taking care of that uh, that question. Oh, and that's a great point. <laughs> our, uh, I'm not sure which of our, our staff is in the chat right now, but um, they're, they're mentioning that if you're in Europe right now because you're, uh, you know, depends on where you are, but, you know, about six hours ahead or so, um, you're encountering the, uh, this, this event now. You're able to see the planets in alignment. So if you're watching from Europe, check them out. Uh, Randy, oh, great question. Uh, are the remaining planets aligned as well? So to view that, I'm going to turn off the atmosphere. Hold your breath, everyone. So... Uh, this is going to show us if there's any planets along the way, along this path that we missed. So if I zoom in here, we'll find yes, there are. And I thought there was another. But maybe it doesn't want to show up because it's too dim. I can't remember exactly where it... Oh, here it is. Yep, that's why it wasn't... You had to zoom in. It fades away when you're too zoomed out. Okay, so... Yes, this is a fantastic question. So we're still on, uh, actually, June 25th when we'll be observing this, this event. Um, so that's Saturday morning we'll be watching and streaming from our telescopes here at Copernic. <laughs> um, so, sorry, I saw the comment about, I can't breathe. <laughs> that's funny. Um, so uh, Mercury, Venus, Moon, as we saw before, but you'll also notice we have the planet Uranus. That's how I'm going to pronounce it. Um, that's the Greek pronunciation for the for the Greek god, and uh, subsequently the the planet. So <laughs> Uranus, and we're going to zoom in here. It's also a, a ring world, not as good a rings as Saturn, but I uh, they're maybe second. Uh, second place. Neptune and Jupiter also have uh, ring systems. And uh, you can see the moons, but you would not see this through a telescope. <laughs> uh, these planets are uh, large, larger than the Earth, certainly, but uh, not as large as Jupiter or Saturn, and also way farther out. It took a long time to discover these because you do not see them with your eye in the sky. Uh, we needed optical equipment to actually find them. So uh, you can't see that one in the sky, but because it's a main planet, it does fall along the ecliptic like we talked about earlier. So uh, that's all well and good. Um, if you have a powerful enough telescope, you might just about be able to make out the disk of Uranus. Uh, it is a challenge, though. It's a challenge object. Um, I've seen it before in the in our largest telescope, the 20-inch, and even with a huge telescope, a huge aperture like that, it's a real challenge um, to both find it and 
even resolve it with with your eye. It it kind of looks well, honestly, it looks like the Ring Nebula if you've ever seen the Ring Nebula before. So uh, that's why those are called planetary nebulas because they kind of look like planets. <clears throat> uh, so that's Uranus. And then we have Mars and Jupiter. And if remember, we zoomed in here, we did reveal Neptune in between Jupiter and Saturn. So we'll click and zoom in on Neptune. Now, what's is nice about these planets is you can see the pale colors from them. The pale sort of teal from Uranus and the blue from Neptune. So uh, that's one nice thing to observe in detail about them. You can see the ring systems modeled here for Neptune as well and the moons. <clears throat> so those are all, uh, th those two are there. Uh, in total, that makes uh, seven planets. Uh, but, uh, and of course, you can complete the, the set of eight if you look down. <laughs> uh, and so you can see all eight uh, main planets if you have the right equipment to try and resolve Uranus and Neptune. Well, like I said, that's a big challenge um, without the right setup. <clears throat> and more than that, they are not in order, of course. So they don't, they, they don't follow the, the nice, uh, with the five brightest planets out there. They don't follow the nice order. Uh, so it's up to you if you want to try and include them. But it's, it's really cool at all that you have the seven planets in the sky all at once um, that you can try and find. And then, like I said, just look down to see the eighth <laughs> and that you've, you've seen all planets that day. So uh, again, worth a try if you have the right, right equipment. All right, uh, what other questions we have here? Oh, uh, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce the name. Uh, Daji, maybe? Um, and it says they're seeing the alignment from Ethiopia and can see all of them except Mercury. So we have people viewing right now, which is so cool. If you're somewhere like in Europe, for example, uh, that is watching this right now, um, let us know in the chat uh, because uh, we're, we're, we're excited to share that experience with you or at least hear about it. Um, just like uh, we try and use our equipment here to, to share it with everyone on YouTube. Um, that's a big part of astronomy is sharing experiences and learning from each other. So uh, definitely uh, tell us in the chat if you're, if you're seeing them. Okay. Uh, Samira says, when is the best viewing for the alignment? Uh, they live in Kenya. Oh, wow. Uh, so, well, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh like I said, we're, uh, I'll take uh, you on a trip uh, to different locations on Earth. Um, and uh, we, we'll, we'll go to uh, Kenya as well to see uh, what this alignment will look like. And we'll do that in uh, maybe 15 minutes or so. I'm trying to uh, get to this other program, too, that I want to share with you. Um, so we'll take those requests in just a bit um, for... Uh, what this alignment will look like where you are. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it's cloudy in in uh, England. Yeah, we're based in, in New York, so we're behind you guys across the pond there. And um, we also won't get to see it tonight because it's cloudy, but we will get to see it uh, you can see it's organized this, almost the same way on uh, Saturday uh, morning. We'll get to see this event. It, we are expecting clear skies for that day. So look out for this uh, for views through our telescopes over YouTube. Um, we'll try and get as many of the planets as we can Saturday morning. Um, my guess is that for sure Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars and the moon... Venus and Mercury is a maybe. Venus, or sorry, Mercury more so than Venus, because Mercury hangs so close to the, the horizon um, in the morning time. 
So I should turn the atmosphere back on. Okay. I'm sorry I made you hold your breath for so long. <laughs> um, my, my bad. The atmosphere is back on, though. Deep breaths, everyone. Okay. Uh, any... We have someone, Alisa, tuning in from Ohio. Uh, Happy's asking, some say this alignment has never occurred like this before. Um, I mean, I guess it depends on how you think about it. Like uh, like this, is uh, it's it's unique in the sense that, the, yeah, the, the planets have never necessarily been in this, in their position, the solar system at this time, uh, or in this way, rather, to show up in Earth's sky all in the line um, at those specific spots. But uh, the, the one thing I'm not sure of here is the moon. I'm not sure the last time the moon appeared in this, in order with the main planets, the, main, the five bright planets, rather. Uh, I'm not, not sure the last time that happened. I do know the next time uh, the five bright planets will appear in the sky together is in 2040, and uh, usually you have an event like this every uh, 50 years or so, every half century. So it gives you a lot of oppor opportunity. Um, well, I shouldn't say a lot. <laughs> you, you have maybe a couple times in your life to, to see this many planets at, at once. Um, so that's, that's pretty uh, cool. It makes it a rare event. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's, it, it depends on how you look at it. Um, each one is a little different because they're positioned a little differently. And uh, the, uh, when, when you have so many in the sky, including Uranus and Neptune, that can, be, that can be rare. And if you want, I don't have enough time to go through it all today, but you can use Stellarium to go way back in time and to look for these uh, alignments. Uh, yourself, you can see when they when they happened and what they looked like, uh, you know, a thousand years ago, for instance. Fantastic question. <clears throat> um, can you see it at twelve a.m. tomorrow? Um, again, it really depends on where you are. the The timeline. Um, the, but either way, the, the key uh, here is if you want to see them all in a line, including Mercury, you got to wake up about an hour before sunrise um, at the very least to try and find them. But uh, around, at least where we are, around midnight, we would uh, see Saturn, and then a little bit later on, Jupiter would come out. I think that's, yeah, around 1 o'clock in the morning. So... Uh, if you want to be a, uh, stay up all night and watch each planet rise, that's one way to do it. But you won't see them all at once at midnight, at least where, well, in any case, uh, you won't see them at midnight wherever you are. Uh, okay, so it looks like I've gotten through the questions. Like I said, uh, stay tuned if you want me to, uh, uh, you know, we, I saw Australia, Ohio, Florida, Kenya, um, Stay tuned. Uh, we'll go through those uh, together and see what your skies will look like um, tonight and a Saturday morning as well. <clears throat> uh, but for now, I'm going to take you into another app, uh, another program. Uh, and this one is called Space Engine. This is going to give us an outside view, outside of the Earth. What does this event look like? So we're Stellarium is Earth-based, or at least ground-based. You can pop around to other planets and see what their skies look like, but you can't travel to them. Space Engine is where we can start traveling. So let's click on that, and I'll make sure it looks good in your view. I think so. So I'm going to lock these here. Oh, that didn't work. There we go. I'm going to pin my toolbar. There we go. So here is the Earth. can move around it. It's a very uh, well-rendered planet. In fact, down to the terrain and the contours. Um, now, not necessarily the satellite data. Um, that would 
require uh, modeling the entire planet uh, down to the you know smallest resolutions, <clears throat> that would be way too much data. And this is not that big of a program. So, uh, but it is very impressive. You know, you can really zoom in and see a lot of the surface features of the planet. Not quite Google Earth level, but still very good. Uh, but uh, of course, that's that's for good reason because you're expanding outward too. You're looking at the entire universe, in fact, uh, as at least as much as we know of it. So you can orbit the planet, and there's even a flight simulator in here, so you can actually fly through the solar system. Lots of options for this, but. Uh, this is set up for, double check this here. Oh, no, we're not. We are not set up for current time. We are way far away. It looks like July 11th in the year 27,283. I must have been doing uh, doing some time traveling last time I used this because I just uh, continued from where I left off. So we're going to go back to the current time. Ooh, that's a cool view. Like I said, it simulates some nice uh, views here. Those that were interested in what the Earth looked like during the... Uh... <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, during the lunar eclipse, let me show you that this actually allows you to see that. Well, it would be a little bit more complicated to find it all again. Let's try it. Let's try it together. Why not? We're going to go to the moon. It'll show you the power of this app before we look at the planetary alignment. Uh, but this requires that I go back a month to May 15th. Ah. Okay, let's, let's make sure that this is, this is going to render what we want it to. Oops. Or, no, it was uh, midnight, wasn't it? Let's say 20. Yeah, it keeps doing that. 23. I don't know why it wants to delete the whole thing. 23. 40. Hmm. Well, we should be in shadow. Why we're not, I don't know. But, uh, is the earth over here? I think we're getting sidetracked. I thought that'd be a fun idea, but maybe our setup isn't quite right. Something, something must be weird with the time. Uh, anyhow, let's go ahead and travel to the Earth again, because we're going to zoom out from the Earth. This is approximately the view that you would get from the moon during a solar eclipse. So you wouldn't really see much of the uh, corona of the sun, like you would during a solar eclipse, but that gives you a sense of what it would look like from the surface of the moon. All right, now we're going to zoom out, way out. There's the moon, and there's the planets, all orbiting around the sun. Looks like Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars... Jupiter, Saturn, don't see the other two, but I can turn on the orbits now to show you the current setup for our solar system and why, if we go to the sun, why we are in alignment at all here. So again, Mercury, Venus, Earth. And you can see it's because of our viewpoint uh, <clears throat> where we're uh, framed with the solar system. 
So we're viewing outwards and we're seeing our field of view is including all of the planets. So you have Mercury here that's really close to the sun and that's why it's so complicated uh, to try and spot it in the early, uh, just before sunrise. Then you have Earth facing towards Venus and then Mars facing towards Jupiter and Saturn and then also Uranus and Neptune. And you can see they're not in a line in the solar system. They are in their uh, uh, their own spots in their orbit. They're not in a, in a line along their orbits. But from our perspective, from our field of view, looking out into the universe, we get to see them appear as that line across the sky. And it just so happens they're positioned in their orbits in such a way to allow us to see them in order. Mercury being appearing closest to the sun, then Venus and Mars and so on. Until you get to Uranus and Neptune, which are in different spots in their orbit. So you see them uh, fitting in between the planets from our perspective. So you can, if you draw a line back out to where we're viewing from the Earth, it looks like, I think that was, yeah, this is, it, uh, Neptune is in between Jupiter and Saturn. Yeah, I remember seeing that, right, in Stellarium. <clears throat> so I think a program like this can really give you a, a firm sense of why these events happen, how they happen, and uh, it's a very powerful tool. So I, I recommend Space Engine or something like it. Space Engine is by no means the only option for viewing a 3D view of the solar system. There are others out there. Um, so check it out. Uh, check something like it out. Uh, Space Engine is a paid application. Um, and so, by the way, not sponsored at all by them. It's just my preferred one to use at the moment. Uh, but... Uh, there's a lot of them out there. There's even one called Solar Walk uh, on iOS, um, and that works really well. Uh, it might be on Android, Android 2. It's from the same developers that made Star Walk, which is the Stellarium type uh, version, that, that application. Okay, so that's showing you that outside view of why this planetary alignment occurs. Let's uh, bounce back to Stellarium and start looking at different spots on, on the Earth, okay? Um, and I will uh, do, after we do this, I will answer some more questions and then we'll wrap up the stream uh, to return Saturday morning for our view from New York through our telescopes. Okie doke. <clears throat> so, uh, let's, and again, if you have an idea, uh, if you have a location you'd like me to view, go ahead and list it in the chat and just mention, yeah, can we check out this spot on Earth where I live? Um, and we'll try it out because we have enough uh, uh, time to, to try a few out. Now, the first one I had in mind was just going uh, as close to the North Pole or north of us as po uh, possible. Uh, because I want to show you why it's a, these uh, planets are a problem if you live further north from us here in New York. Uh, and you know what? To save on resources, I'm going to shut Space Engine down for now. Just because it is a pretty intense app. And that's why we're probably getting some stuttering in Stellarium. Yeah, that feels a lot better. All right, so we're going to go further north. I'm just going to click a random spot. It doesn't have to be specific. I'll try and keep in line. But otherwise, I think you're immediately noticing the issue <laughs> with this. So, here is north, uh, further north, at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh that's a problem in and it of itself, is that you have a lot of daytime. 
So even if we travel hour by hour here, this is not what the North Pole looks like, by the way. <laughs> the, the ground didn't change. We changed locations, but the ground didn't change. Um, the sun just moves across the sky. It just, no matter what you do, you can't get it to set. Might get a little bit lower. But if you look, you almost, at one point, you almost have the entire ecliptic. Just a little bit at the bottom here, you're missing. So, if you live at the North Pole, you're going to have a hard time seeing anything. Uh, if you can find Jupiter and even Saturn, in some cases, can get through daylight. So if you can find those, there might be a possibility. Um, but you need to know where to where to find them, exactly where they're located in the sky. Um, and but that's true all the time. Uh, they're just bright enough to, uh, with a scope that you can spot them. Um, but uh, otherwise, yeah, you won't. You unfortunately won't be able to see this. <clears throat> uh, now, what about the polar opposite? And I mean that quite literally. Um, let's go to the South Pole. Right down to the South Pole here. Here's the South Pole in the afternoon, around 3 o'clock. Darkness, right? Because down in the Southern Hemisphere, you're experiencing winter time. So uh, that means the South Pole is experiencing 24-7 darkness, whereas the North Pole experiences 24-7 uh, daylight. Now, if you look here, we are getting some planets. So, right, this could be advantageous if you're in the, uh, yeah, if you're in the South Pole or in very low uh, in the Southern Hemisphere. Because, okay, it's nighttime all the time. That means you can see maybe even the dimmest planets. But let's see what happens here. We get a full perspective on this. I'm going to get rid of the labels just to clean things up a little. Okay, we have Saturn. We certainly have Saturn. Okay, we have Saturn. And Saturn. <laughs> and more Saturn. So, if your goal is to see Saturn during the planet five planetary alignment, you're all set. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, you're not going to be seeing much else. In fact, let's turn off the ground here. Oops. We'll stay focused on Saturn. Let's turn off the ground. We'll find the other planets. There's Mars and the Moon, Venus, Mercury. Uh, oh, here's Jupiter. Oh, I see. It's kind of, it, it should be brighter than that when we've turned off the ground, but there's a little glitch there. Um, so Jupiter, Mars. Um, yeah, that's not going to uh, be very good. You're just going to be enjoying Saturn that night, and that's about it. So, uh, anyone living in Antarctica at the moment, <clears throat> uh, yeah, they won't, they won't be able to enjoy the, the, the alignment, sadly. Uh, but thankfully, there's not many of us that are there. Um, okay, so let's see where else. Now we can start touring around locations I saw in the chat. Uh got the first one. I'm going to scroll back up to the top. Oh yeah, uh, so we had South Florida. I'm just going to click on Florida here to give you an idea. We're going to go back to current time and we'll adjust for the event. The nice thing is we just have to go uh, hour by hour <coughs> to see what, what comes up. So here we are in Florida. And there's Saturn at around 11 o'clock, a little bit uh, earlier. Here comes Jupiter, 1 o'clock. Mars, following Jupiter as we saw before, maybe around 1.30. The moon rising at 2 o'clock in the morning. Venus, 
and Mercury, and there's the Sun. Now, we are further south, move towards the equator, so you can see Mercury will be a little bit higher up in the sky for you compared to us uh, in further north. Um, just And that just has to do with uh, how uh, steep the ecliptic is in altitude in our sky. So uh, that's why you actually, your ecliptic is, is steeper in altitude and you actually get to see it higher in the sky, giving you some more opportunity to spot it. Um, if your horizon is limited, if you have trees and things like that. Uh, though in Florida, I mean, lots of coast there, right? Uh, you, you could have the option to just uh, see the horizon across the, the ocean, uh, which is just perfect for things like this. All right. So that's Florida. Let's go, oh, let's go back a few hours and start again. So I saw, I think Australia was next. I had a, we had a couple people from tuning in from Australia. So let's go. Um, now, of course, Australia is a large uh, country and a continent in itself. So uh, I'm just going to do my best here. We'll just do an average right in the middle. <clears throat> here is Australia around 1 o'clock. <laughs> okay, let's go hour by hour and get the sun to set. Oh, that's right. Things are a little weird. Okay. Uh, so go hour, hour, and we'll see what rises up. There's Saturn. Not too far off from our rise time from Saturn here in New York. That, sh that probably makes some sense based on where uh, you're located. What is the... Uh... Yeah, it's not, it's not too far off. Um, so there's Saturn going hour by hour to get Jupiter and Mars, the Moon and Venus and Mercury. And what's cool about viewing this in Australia, or in the Southern Hemisphere for that matter, is that you can see them uh, if you're, because we're, we're flipped, um, going from Northern to Southern Hemisphere, you see them on different, uh, still in the, on the Eastern side, but it's, it's uh, flipped in our view here. So if I try and do this, to try and look south, things look really wonky. And you see also, this is a very steep, because Australia is in the winter. Winter time, the sun is very low, but the planets, or the ecliptic itself, is very high in the sky at night. So uh, that's advantageous to you, because you end up with very steep uh, mercury, for example. Uh, so it'll be higher up in the sky a little bit, and then you have uh, Venus following that. So uh, that gives you some more opportunity, and the higher planets are in the sky, the better for viewing as well. When they're too close to the, and that's telescopic viewing, if they're too close to the horizon, then uh, you sort of uh, are looking to, through too much of the atmosphere. Um, and it can really ruin your view of the planets. Now, for Mercury and Venus, thankfully, that's more or less a non-issue because uh, you really can't make out too, detail, too much detail on those planets either way. Venus has just thick layers of clouds in its atmosphere preventing us from seeing the surface anyways, and Mercury is uh, just too close to the sun. We can, it's really difficult to resolve any detail on its surface with all that uh, direct reflection from the sun itself. Um, so th there is a lot of challenges with those two to begin with. Now, if Jupiter or Saturn were hugging the horizon, that would be a bigger issue and, uh, is to some degree a problem for us here in the summertime, uh, in the Northern hemisphere, they are closer to the horizon, meaning you are looking through more haze 
and that limits your ability to see detail in those worlds. All right. So we had Australia. What's next? Again, if those just uh, tuning in, if you want uh, to see what the planetary alignment should look like where you're located, just put it in the chat and we'll give it a try. Again, this is something that you can do at home too if you go to stellarium.org and download the application yourself. Uh, who is next? And if I miss you, um, miss your uh, location, um, just put, put it in the chat again. I'm just skimming here. Oh, I remember. Yep, I remember Kenya. So let's see. This will be a good, just because I can't remember exactly where it's located. I apologize. Um, this should be, well, I hope it should be a good example of where, how we reset location list. There we go. Wow, does, does Stellarium not have it? That's unfortunate. Why does it not? Well, we're gonna do, find, uh, estimate it all the same. Maybe it's because it can't uh, generalize it. And again, my uh, lack of knowledge in geography is showing here. <laughs> Whoops. Ah. All right. So we're at the... Uh, Right in here. So here's Kenya. And uh, again, we have that because kind of flipped here. There we go, back to east to west. It's just because of how steep that ecliptic is that it, it looks strange. But it's uh, going to be similar, not too uh, far off from what we saw with Australia, with the ecliptic being so high in the sky, uh, this is getting really close. In fact, almost right on the equator. So that means the ecliptic is going to be really high up, and that allows for a really cool view of the planets. When you're looking right towards the east, they're almost in the exact middle of the sky. The ecliptic is basically breaking the sky in half, and the planets fall along this line. So Kenya was a great example to show you what it's like at the equator for this event. It's uh, really cool to see that. I think I've only seen something similar to it once that I can remember. Um, and I honestly, I was young enough that I can't remember where it was, but I remember seeing these planets in, in a line uh, almost halfway through the sky. So, uh, it's it's uh, if you're if you travel a lot, it's worth doing. And if you're uh, around the equator where you live, go ahead and uh, take this opportunity to enjoy this site because it's going to be so cool to see the planets just stretch halfway through the sky. Just look at how the ecliptic almost breaks the sky in half. This was a great example of a place uh, to tour in Stellarium. All right, let me reset the chat window here. There we go. Okay. So you saw they're answering some questions there in the chat. I'm just skimming through. Bear with me. Oh, 
Okay, we have a request from Europe, the Balkans. So let's go there. Which is right in here, I think. Okay. And now we get to see, we were talking about Europe earlier and that this event was visible for those across uh, the Atlantic Ocean there uh, currently. But now it's moved far enough along, you're gonna, it's going to be hard to see Mercury. Um, so the sun might even, oh, not quite. In the Balkans here, um, it's not quite above the horizon, but you're in enough twilight um, and almost daylight that trying to find... Uh, actually, is Merc where is Mercury? Oh, it's it. Yeah, see, it the Stellarium is simulating uh, it effectively because it's it's there, it's here, but it's not bright enough anymore because it's in too much daylight. Venus, maybe the Moon, certainly, but the other Jupiter and Saturn are going to be. Uh, slowly lost as well. So if you back it up an hour though, this is what it looked like an hour. Now don't forget, this is still visible the following day. So if your skies are cloudy over there and uh, or you just didn't have the chance to see it, don't fret. You can still see it on the uh, both the 24th and the 25th are great times to see it with the moon in the right position in the sky as well. So don't, don't forget that and don't uh, I, I don't want to make it out like this is your only chance. It's it's not. The 24th of June is not your only chance to see this. The 25th is an option, and even moving uh, into the 26th might be cool as well because the moon will be right on top of Venus. Um, so that's kind of a neat view. Okay. Uh, California. California. We'll go right across, get about the same altitude, or no, uh, latitude, thereabouts, while trying to stay in California. All right. We'll have to adjust the time here again. We're on June 24th. Uh, so we're going to go to our observant. Well, let's do tonight. So you might have good, good skies there. The times I've traveled to California have been lovely. So we'll go back to the morning, uh, tomorrow morning, just before sunrise. And here it is at four in the morning, where you're located, uh, or thereabouts. I mean, California, of course, covers a long range of latitudes. Um, so I might not have uh, gotten it perfectly there. But uh, this is at 41 degrees. Oh, that's pretty close to us, yeah. So we're at 42 degrees latitude. This is 41 degrees. Um, I might be a little bit too far north, but uh, here it is. Venus, Mercury is there too in the haze. Moon, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. We back it up a bit. It'll look very similar to our view. It's just different times. Uh, well, similar times, but different times for us. We're three hours ahead from California. Okay. And uh, just because I haven't done it yet, I'm, I'd, I'd like to take a moment um, to thank you all for, for viewing and showing your support for uh, what we do. Um, I want to emphasize that we are going to stream this eclipse event Uh very soon uh, on Saturday morning. So just keep that in, in mind. Um, also, there is a, uh, if, if you're willing, if you're able to support us uh, by, through donation, there is a donation link in the chat for today. <laughs> um, all right. So let's see. Where do we want to go next? Whoops. Uh, try not to miss any. 
Dominic is uh, tuning in from Germany and says they saw it at 5 o'clock in the morning. Awesome. You guys, uh, uh, I've heard a couple stories so far that people have been able to see it uh, because you're several hours ahead of us here in New York. You get the chance to, to, to spot it before us. Um, although we won't be seeing it much at all tonight because it's so cloudy <clears throat> uh, for tonight. But Saturday morning, we will. We will go check it out. All right, we have uh, South Texas. Let's have a look at South Texas here. Or thereabouts. Uh, it does give us... <coughs> Excuse me. Try not to cough in the mic. Um, so, there is Texas for you. Again, moving further down south, it's not going to be too dissimilar from what we were looking at with South Florida. Uh, your your uh, ecliptic is going to be higher up in the sky because you're getting closer to the equator. So that does uh, that is to your advantage because the planets will look better being higher in the sky, and it gives you more of a chance to see Mercury, perhaps. Uh, no matter what you do, Mercury is going to be close to the sun, but at least changing your uh, ecliptic's altitude helps you a little bit. We have uh, New York. We can we can go uh, back to New York here just as a uh, refresher. Uh, let's see here. Let's go back to Binghamton. That's where that's the big city that's near us. Well, moderate size city. Um, here it is tomorrow morning in Binghamton. If we if we could see it. So for those in New York, where we where Copernic is based, this is what our event will look like. Again, compared to Texas, we just saw our ecliptic is much lower in the sky, um, which does. Uh, make Mercury a little bit more of a challenge. But uh, we will be able to see all of them we, where we are based. Again, we just need a good sight line. Again, in my area of New York, it's cloudy. I think I when I was seeing what, what locations were clear this week, I think up towards Rochester, New York is clear. So if you're living up towards Rochester, you should be able to see it tonight. Um, but in... Our location, we won't be able to see it till Saturday morning, which is when we'll stream. The I saw someone request uh, Houston, um, and uh, that 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 won't be too different from what we were looking at with Texas before. Okay, now again, I think this one here, uh, I have a couple people asking, uh, Josefina is asking from, uh, uh, for Buenos Aires, Argentina, I can't remember exactly where Buenos Aires is, but we can see if we can find it, uh, Buenos Aires, oh, it did get it, good, okay, oh, that's further, yeah, that's, uh, I was going to choose somewhere uh, more s south in Argentina, but that's good that it, it, it shows north. It showed me where it is. <laughs> um, so we're in the southern hemisphere again with Argentina. So our sky is a little bit uh, crazy, and it's uh, sort of the ecliptics move down into the other further north, right? That's what's weird is that when you go into the south... Now, I mean weird for... The, those of us in the northern hemisphere, it's totally not weird for those in this, living in the southern hemisphere, um, it, and, and vice versa, probably. Um, so when we were just looking in at where, we're, where we're, we were located, around Binghamton, New York, um, the, it sort of flipped. I wonder if we can... See, the times change so much, it's a little bit difficult to show you uh, option one versus option two. 
But just know that, you know, for us here, our ecliptic hangs in the, su the sou southern part of the sky. For those living in the southern hemisphere, it will hang closer to the northern part of the sky. So it's, you sort of get this weird uh, bend depending on where you're, you're located. <clears throat> so let's, let's see, we're at five o'clock in the morning. Venus is there. Going further along, it's winter time. So uh, the sun, it's winter time in the Southern hemisphere. So it takes time for the, the sun to rise. That's why this is so uh, late compared to our time timing here. And you have Mercury rising, Venus, Moon, and you can see it's different directions when you're looking here because it's you're looking towards the, the north for where their ecliptic is. So this is a really cool view, again, uh, similar to what we were seeing with Australia, but of course that's opposite side of the planet, so you're looking at different times, but a uh, similar uh, viewpoint. It's really cool. All right. And let's see if this one will work. Does not. Ah, here we go. In Macedonia. Again, we're in Europe. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. I'm using the wrong thing. I'm taking us through the months. We don't want to do that. Ah, this is a... Oh, this is a tricky one. Yes, okay. There we go. Oh, no, it's not bad. Never mind. <laughs> I, I, I had it flipped to when we were in Argentina, but now I got to point it towards the southern sky because, again, uh, those in the northern hemisphere are ecliptic which is the red line showing you where the planets fall, uh, hangs in the south. Southern hemisphere it hangs in the north. So here it is uh, in Macedonia. <coughs> Excuse me. And this looks like the ISS. No, nope, that's the crew. Oh, Crew Dragon. Satellites show up in Stellarium, too, so that's the Crew, Crew Dragon capsule, at least according to this here. Um, Crew Dragon is where the what the craft the astronauts used to fly to the International Space Station. So that's kind of cool, if that's true. Um, now, I don't know how bright it would it truly would be. This says it would be, it'd be pretty, pretty bright. Now, how accurate that data is is another question. Um, unless that's just the... Oh, no, that is the... I see. It's, it's picking up Crew Dragon following it. That's what I clicked on first. I was going to say that was very bright. Um, so that's a cool thing. Um, in the morning, uh, you, those that, now this is June 24th. That won't be there probably on the 25th. Yeah, it's not going to be there Saturday morning. But if you got up early um, on the 24th, you may have seen the ISS. So if you're wondering what that bright object was flying through the planets, that's what it was. Oh boy, we had a lot of questions. Uh, let's see if I can answer at least a few. I do have to wrap up here myself. I'm, I'm given my... Uh, uh, my timeline is probably around 11 o'clock for me. That's our clock at the top. Um, so I make sure I get enough sleep for the uh, big event that we're going to cover. Uh, on the, We'll be looking at each of these planets, uh, the five planetary alignment plus the moon. Um, I saw someone want, wanted me to go back to New York one more time to show you our view. So uh, back to our location. On Saturday morning, we're going to cover this event. So uh, 
if you're interested, subscribe to the channel so you can see when we go live. And you know, hit, you can even hit the alert button, the bell, uh, to get an alert when we go live. Um, it will be especially uh, uh, good for, for those that are just waking up, uh, that are across, on the other side of the planet where it's daytime um, already. Uh, it'll be a, a useful tool because then you can see our perspective on it and uh, actually get to see the planets through telescopes as well. So skies are going to be clear Saturday morning, and this will be our view. Oh, we're, we got to go back a day. So around 4.30 is when we're going to want to see all of them. But I'm starting the stream at 2.30 in the morning so that we can take a, a lot of time with Saturn and Jupiter and Mars and take some time to appreciate them before rushing through Venus and Mercury. I think we'll be able to have some time with the moon as well because there's not going to be a lot of time for these two. So I'm going to start, give us some time for those. So uh, yeah, uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to uh, see that uh, with the telescope. Let me see if I can answer a few more questions here before I wrap up. Oh, that's a, a good question. Um, What Saturn, uh, Bandu asks, what Saturn's ring uh, rocks have in them? Is it uh, like dust or just regular rock? Um, so a lot of the material is dust. In fact, most of the material is uh, water ice. Uh, that's a very prevalent substance uh, among Saturn's rings as well as the moons. And uh, that leads into the theory of uh, perhaps Saturn's uh, rings formed from a moon that was broken apart by Saturn's gravity. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll talk a lot about Saturn's rings when we look through uh, our telescope, when we hook up our camera up to it and showing you a nice uh, magnified view. And uh, Astronomy Web, our moderator, says, best way to observe this event is with just your eyes. I couldn't agree uh, more uh, because the, the best part about it is to... Uh, look at it from a wide field perspective so you can see all of them stretch across the sky. Um, so while you can focus on that at home with your view that you, you have, we're going to provide you the telescopic view. And I'm also planning to have a wide angle view too, um, if I can make that work so that we can see the planets in a camera, um, see what our viewpoint looks like here. Uh, and uh, so if you were looking out as if you were looking out right here from New York and then also a camera in a telescope so you can see the detail on each of the planets. And that's what's going to make it our planetary marathon where we bounce between each world through a telescope. Um, you don't get to do that too often. So uh, this is a great opportunity to try and capture at least the bright planets plus the moon. So adding an astrophotography element to it all. Pattern uh, asks, how rare is this event and how often does it repeat? Uh, so it depends on, again, how you, how you look at it. Um, having all planets visible in the sky at one time uh, is rare, certainly. Um, and that's the case right now. You have all seven planets in the sky. And with the Earth, where you just look down, you can see all the planet, all the main planets in the solar system. That's really cool. However, with Neptune and Uranus, you do have to use a telescope to see those ones, and a, a large enough one that can resolve them, uh, because they're too dim to see with the eye. Um, so that's why you've seen this referred to as a five planetary alignment, because it's the five bright planets. And then you have the moon in the mix as well. And the moon makes this kind of unique, uh, too, because you have it following the order of the planets, um, you can think of the moon subbing in for the Earth. It's in orbit around us, so it's going to represent the third. So you have Mercury, Venus, Moon, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn following the order of the solar system. 
whereas uh, Uranus and Neptune do kind of break that up. They're not following the order. Uranus is in between the Moon and Mars, and Neptune is in here between Jupiter and Saturn. And again, this is from <laughs> our viewpoint. But the order of the planets remains the same um, across the, the sky, um, no matter where you are. Uh, the order shows up as such. Uh, looking through any final questions that I may have missed. Someone mentioned, uh, DM is uh, talking about this, uh, a solar flare i i'm not i haven't looked my, my focus has mostly been on the planetary alignment uh i will say majority of the time solar flares aren't too much to worry about um even as we reach solar peak there certainly are exceptions to that uh but uh in most cases it's it's generally okay but worth monitoring that space weather Yes, Oranus. I like how you, you spelled it. Uh, that's uh, Gian, your name is. Um, yes, that's the Oranus is, uh, I was taught, is the Greek pronunciation of it. And it's my uh, preference <laughs> most of the time. So uh, it's the, you know, the, that's how they would pronounce the Greek uh, god. So subsequently we pronounce uh, the planet as such, or can. You don't have to. Uh, Randy asked, does it happen the same time of year? Not necessarily. Um, it, uh, when, it, when, it, when it happens again, the next time will be, like I said, the five, the five bright planets together will be in August. Uh, of 2040, I think it was. So uh, it doesn't have to happen at the same time by any means. It's not a seasonal quality to these planetary alignments. Uh, it's just when the orbits sync up enough that we get to see them all in, in the sky at the same time. But we can predict it. That's the best part about it, is our model of the solar system and of the universe is so predictable. All right. Um, I think I got through most of the questions here. Um, I know there was a, a bit of a gap there, so I apologize if I did miss anything. Um, it's, this isn't quite uh, the uh, just constant chain of messages, though, so I, I, that, that's good, certainly. Um, now, again, I just want to emphasize for those uh, viewing, if you want uh, to see uh, telescopic coverage of this event, as well as some wide-angle camera shots of the planets in a line. Um, stay tuned for our version of that coverage that is going to be on Saturday morning when our skies will be clear um, through the morning. And uh, we'll hook a camera up to our scopes. We'll have a camera set up off to the side to show you the wide view of all the planets lined up. Um, I think it'll be really fun. So subscribe to the channel. Um, if you liked this content that we did today, I actually uh, wasn't uh, expecting to go on for so long, but you guys had such engaging questions, and um, I think we had a lot of fun looking at different locations of this event. Um, so I think it was it was a worthwhile stream, and I thank you so much for for tuning in on it. Uh, so, like I said, if you if you enjoyed the content, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, we uh, 
survive truly on uh, your kind support and uh, with uh, your donations as well. It helps our, our staff. We just recently did some major upgrades to our streaming studio thanks to uh, your help during the uh, Lunar Eclipse live stream. Um, and maybe I'll do a, a little YouTube short at some point to show you uh, what we were actually were able to do um, to, to expand a little bit and to improve. I, I, uh, one of the things, um, and feel free to put in the chat if you like it or not, or if you think there's something we could change, um, is we have our new uh, streaming setup, our, our window, our template, we call it. Um, so we have these, these windows for you when you view it on YouTube where you can see a presentation or my camera feed here um, or above me the title of the content and we have the weather and the date and time up there. Um, so let me know if you if you like that. Um, it'll probably pop up in the observing streams as well in uh, some form. Uh, I'll probably open up this box to a second, a third rather window um, with some, my thought is either the wide camera or maybe even the planetary cam because we can uh, fit a whole planet in that with at reasonable size. So uh, we'll see how what form that takes on Saturday morning. Oh my mountain Valley says miss the breaks for cake though. Oh yes, I know we <laughs> we we did have uh, some uh, some time there and I am looking for ways um, to uh, return to a, a more relaxed um, set of observing streams and my first one is going to be probably in July um, mid late July with the Milky Way uh, ambient stream or ambient stream <laughs> uh, and I'll have some music there I might tune in once in a while um, ask, answer some questions, but um, otherwise, I, I think it'll be just some some nice uh, celestial music and uh, some views of the Milky Way, just to change things up a bit <clears throat> and give uh, those that don't have a view of the Milky Way the option to to check it out. All right. Okay. So while while the chat is quiet, uh, I'm sorry. I'll. I'll if you wait for the stream to end um, and post a recording afterwards and you put your questions in that video, I will be able to answer them. I won't be able to answer questions that show up in the live chat as I shut down. So keep that in mind. Um, it just, uh, unfortunately, it, it'll save them, but I can't quite fully reply to them. Uh, so hold your any questions from now on um, until the recording posts and I'll, I will be able to get to some of those, uh, tomorrow. Um, but yeah, at, the, at this point, I think it's best we wrap up, save some energy for the big stream coming up Saturday morning. And, uh, we will hopefully, uh, see you, see you then. So thank you for watching, um, and see you Saturday morning.